Hello and welcome to part one of this introduction to hard surface modeling from blendercookie.com. In this first part, I want to look at preparing our workspace for a more optimal workflow when modeling our object here. The first thing that I want to do is I want to configure the workspace to make it a little bit more friendly for modeling. Secondly, I want to go in and set up all of our modeling sheets that have been provided by by Tim Von Bruden at conceptcookie.com. And third, I want to look at and show you one of the add-ons that I'm going to be using throughout this project just to kind of expedite a lot of the repetitive processes that we're going to be doing. So the first thing that you'll notice is that I'm not using the default Blender theme. I'm actually, in fact, using the CG Cookie theme, which is just a modified version of the ZBrush theme, which is shipped with Blender. And you can find the CG Cookie theme from the CG Cookie GitHub repository, which which is linked in the tutorial description. So you can just download the XML file there and then install it if you want to use it. Other than that, it's, you know, the only impact is it's changed the default colors of Blender. Secondly, to configure our workspace, what I want to do is make it a little bit more friendly for modeling. So since we're only going to be modeling in this series, we really don't need to do any animation. So we have no need for the timeline down here. So let's just hover our mouse over the separator bar until we get a double ended arrow. Then we're going to right click and choose join area with then the overlay area pointing towards the timeline. We can then merge the 3D view into the timeline. And this is going to make it a little bit better for modeling, just give us a little bit more space. But at the same time, we're also going to split this space so we can just go right up here to the split handle and just left click and drag to split the view. And this side here, we're going to switch the editor type to the UV image editor. And then in here, we're going to go ahead and put in our beauty shot that Tim has drawn up. So we'll just go to image, open image, and choose plain beauty shot. And click open. And this is just going to give us a good continuous reference for the overall style and feel of the plane while we're modeling it. So we can get a good impression of, you know, how hard we need to treat some of the edges, the overall shape, and whatnot. Next, I want to go in and set up the modeling sheets within the 3D view such that we can use them basically as a blueprint. So I don't need the toolbar right now, so I'm just going to hit T to close the toolbar. And then I'm going to hit N, which will bring up the properties panel right here. And what I want to do is just toggle down the background images section, make sure that it is enabled right here, and then I'm going to click add image. In here, I'm going to then click open and just go back to the references folder here, which again is included in the source files if you download those. And I'm going to load in the front view. Then if we hit one to go to front view, five to toggle into orthographic mode, then you can see the image displayed here in the background. Now I've worked to already go ahead and line these up, so you shouldn't need to do anything else to line them up. But let's do change the axis here from all views to front. This way, if we switch into side view, it doesn't show anymore such that front view only shows in front view. So let's do this again now. Let's click add image. We can toggle down the front view and we're going to load in the side view. So we'll choose side view, and we're going to set it to the right, which is what three goes to. Then let's hit seven to go to top view, and we're going to add in our top view. And then we'll switch this to top, and finally do this one more time for the bottom view. So we'll go back, go to references, choose bottom view, set it to bottom, and then if we hit control seven, that will switch to bottom view, allowing us to see this. So now I've worked again already to prepare all the references such that they line up. So you shouldn't need to do anything else. But if, if at any point throughout this project, we find that the, the uh, offset is off, then we can simply use the X and Y offset and the size here to adapt those. But again, we shouldn't need to because it should be mostly lined up as is. And that's it. The, actually, the last thing that I want to show you then is the add-on that I'm going to be using through this. That add-on is the JTools script, which is a custom script that I've written in Python. And basically, it is a series of shortcuts to commonly used tools. So for example, through this project, since we're doing hard surface modeling, we're going to be using the subdivision surface modifier a lot. We're going to be using the mirror modifier a lot. All of these can be accessed via the modifiers panel here, but we're also going to be using a variety of other tools. And so what I have is called the J tools menu, and it's brought up via hitting Q on your keyboard, like Q is in quit. And you can see that I then have a shortcut to basically add subsurf, add mirror, add a different modifier, apply all modifiers, set the origin of the selected object, shade smooth or shade flat. 
Or if you're in edit mode, then we have things like the inset faces, subdivide, knife topology tool, etc. So all of these things are all basically just shortcuts to commonly used tools throughout the process. So there's nothing in this add-on that you can't already do inside Blender. But through the project, we're going to be using things like Subsurf a lot. And so using the add-on is just going to make it a lot faster to do things like that. Now, just uh, so you know, throughout the entire project, the first time I do something, I will always show you how to do it by default in Blender using the default configuration, whether that is where to find the tool, how to use it, etc. But then as I start to use those tools a lot, oftentimes I will use the, the JTools menu to access those easily. The download for the add-on is linked in the tutorial description or the, the current version as of this recording, which is 0.4, is available inside the source file. So again, if you download the project source files, you'll find it there. You can also find it via the user preferences after you've installed it inside add-ons under JTools. So if you just search for J, you can find it right here. And this gives you the description, shows you where it's at. Uh, you can also change the hotkey. You'll notice that it's accessible via the Q key. If you want to change that, simply go into the input section and under 3D view and then object mode is the first one. So you can see call menu under Q. You can go ahead and set that Q to whatever you want. And then there's also one for mesh or for edit mode. And there's another one for sculpt mode, as you can see right here. So you can go in and customize those if you choose. If you've never installed an add-on before, you can simply go down here. You'll download the .zip file included in the link to the GitHub repository on, on the tutorial description. And you can simply choose install from file, go to the scripts, find the .zip, whether that's the one included in the source files or one that you have downloaded, uh, as this is a script that I'm continuously updating. And so, you know, by the time you watch this or just later down the road, it may be updated and you may want to install a new version. You can simply select the .zip file, click install from file, and that will install it. Now, just be aware that if you've installed the previous version, be sure to click remove before you install the new one. So that's it. We're now ready to jump right into the modeling.